you know that Pete's Dragon is no perfect movie. So Pete's Dragon takes place around the early 1980s, where a forest ranger named Grace, played by Bryce Dallas Howard, stumbles across a young boy named Pete, played by Oakes Fagley. And Pete had lost his parents in a car crash years before, and he spent the last six years in the forest being protected by a dragon named Elliot. And Pete needs to learn how to adapt to society while also preventing Grace's brother-in-law, Gavin, played by Carl Urban, from capturing Elliot. Now, what sets Pete's Dragon apart from other Disney remakes is its atmosphere. Because even though the time period has technically changed from the early 1900s to the early 1980s, it technically isn't really modernized, and thankfully it doesn't really rely on pop culture references or advanced technology in order to tell the story or provide some really forced comedy, so that's one plus. And David Lowery, as a director, also demonstrates that he can tell the story visually to both adults and kids whenever he needs to. Many scenes from the first half of the movie have very minimal dialogue, and they focus more on showing the characters' motivations and their relationships as opposed to us telling them. For example, showing us Elliot playing with Pete, or Pete learning how certain things work, like watching a record player or mimicking someone else's actions, like how to eat properly. And the cinematography is gorgeously shot in massive wide-angle shots, and the effects on Elliot ranging from his fur to his anatomy and how he moves are all rendered flawlessly. Oakes Fagley gives a very good performance as Pete. When he's first trying to adapt to his new surroundings, he reacts like a feral child would in the scenario that he's in. He does growl at things that he thinks are threatening, he does move in a very animalistic way, and when people like Grace and her stepdaughter Natalie, who was played very well by Una Lawrence, try to help him out, you really believe their performances because Grace does treat him the similar way that a mother would to her child, and Natalie does talk to and help Pete in a very friendly way, particularly in one scene where Natalie tries to explain to Pete how imaginary friends work and whether Elliot is imaginary or not. And even though Robert Redford isn't in the movie as much as the trailers make him out to be, his backstory about how he met Elliot in the past is a very sweet backstory, and I think he's in it as long as he really needs to be. Carl Urban, on the other hand, is a bit of a different story. At first, he wants to capture Elliot because he thinks that he's a legitimate threat, which, at first, he definitely believed this, because... If I saw a dragon for the first time, I wouldn't just be like, Oh my god, it's so wonderful, it's so pretty. I'd just be like, that is a dragon, let's get the hell out of here. And it's especially true considering Elliot comes very close to hurting other people, close to even killing people just to protect Pete. And the movie doesn't hide that dark fact. But then, at the beginning of like the last 20 minutes of the film, Urban, out of nowhere, just turns into this cliched, greedy jackass who is more interested in attention as opposed to actually protecting the townspeople from a creature they don't know how to deal with. And because the last 20 minutes focuses on Urban chasing Pete and Elliot through the city with other townspeople becoming more involved, it feels different from the rest of the film, which felt a lot more mature and realistic. And here it just comes off as being really savvy and really in your face in regards to the message where humans and nature have always been in a conflict with each other. And don't get me wrong, I'm all for portraying that message, I just wish filmmakers would come up with a different way to tell the story, because here it's portrayed in the exact same way as other Disney or children's films in the exact same fashion. The third act may be a little bit disappointing, but Pete's Dragon does have very good child performances, excellent cinematography and effects, and a much more mature and realistic atmosphere that you get from other Disney remakes or other Disney films in general. And for that reason, I'm going to give Pete's Dragon a 3.5 out of 5. Guys, thanks as always for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, check out my other reviews at noperfectmovie.com. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care.